Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to chapter 14 of the VW Bug uh, Chronicles. I can't believe we're on 14 and I still haven't gotten this beast running. Or Myrna, sorry. Um, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, where to start? So, remember when we left off, my Holly fuel regulator leaked like a sieve. Uh, well, I discovered something. This is not the correct fitting for this fuel regulator. Oh, it threads in easily enough, but I don't know if you can see. See how loose that is? It should not be that loose. It's loose all the way down. So, gasket or no gasket, that's a problem. So I went to Napa, I went to, what is it, Cragen, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, uh, I think I went to all of them. And of course, nobody has these fittings. I went to Home Depot and Lowell's. They have fittings, but uh, uh, they're basically the same as this. And uh, these, these aren't gonna work. Now I've got a, I need to call Holly, obviously, and, and try to find out what fittings they recommend. Um, I don't know. But this isn't gonna work. So what I did was I went out and bought a Mr. Gasket fuel pressure regulator. See right there. And if you look close, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's actually made by Holly. Now this is very similar to the uh, um, first fuel uh, regulator that I had purchased before. It was an off-brand, so I guess at least this is a branded one. So I thought we would try this. Now I've already put my fittings on and uh, we went ahead and used some uh, some Permatex thread sealant, which it is meant for uh, oil and fuel applications. I don't think it was necessary, but we'll just put on some belt and suspenders. Uh, we did that last night. So I've got it set to two and a half pounds. So I think we'll go ahead and hook this up to the to the line, give it a try and see uh, see if Myrna keeps running when she warms up. At least, again, at least this will eliminate uh, one of the potential or one of the known issues. I, I, I truly believe that fuel is pushing back, pushing past the float and, and, and needle. And then I will continue my search for uh, fittings here that, that actually fit. I need to contact Holly direct. This does 2.8 pounds and this will be two and a half. So this, this could end up working, we'll see. But um, let's go ahead and get it hooked up. We'll start Myrna and we'll see what happens. Fuel regulator is in. As you can see, we are set at two and a half pounds. Let's give Myrna a crank and uh, see what happens.
again and see if she'll start. Let's give her a few seconds, like a full minute. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. It's been about five minutes maybe, maybe a skosh more. But still dry around the manifold. I don't remember when it first started to uh, sweat, but uh, so far, so good. So my prediction is the fuel regulator is working because I don't see any fuel pushing through that gasket there or any sweat. You probably can't see it going down the throat of the manifold. Um, we'll give it a few more minutes and then I'm going to try to start her again. That said, if she starts, Maybe I'm on the right path of disconnecting this electronic choke and zip tying this into a fixed position. Uh, just She'll just warm up a little rough, but once she's running, she, she runs like a scalded cat. But we'll see her in just a second. I'm gonna let it sit for a few more minutes, almost as if we drove or went into the liquor store to buy some, some, some bourbon. And now we're gonna be coming back out, uh, see if she starts, a few more minutes. So we're approaching the 15 minute mark uh, since we shut Myrna off. And as you can see, no, uh, no weeping from the carburetor, no moisture on the manifold. I don't know if you can see it, but the, I don't see any condensation, fuel condensation at all anywhere. So I'm gonna say success for the Mr. Gasket fuel regulator, at least at the moment. I don't smell gas, which I used to smell uh, constantly. Uh, once she died and my argument is we shut her off before she just stalled. Like I said, we're we're right at the 15 minute mark now. I'm going to, uh, uh, should we wait a couple more minutes or should we go ahead and see if she starts? I think, um, I think I'm going to try to start her here. Let's give her a go and see what happens. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, so no starting. I now smell lots of fuel, which makes sense. I, you can see I was pumping the gas pedal. Still no leaking. So what does that mean? I think what that means is we've got to take this fuel pump off. Watch some of those videos that talked about pulling that apart and sanding the plastic rod uh, that could potentially be swelling and and locking 
everything up, I guess. Potentially a problem. But I'm gonna call this a success on some level because again, dry as a bone. No moisture on either side. No moisture on either side. So, as I said before, that was always a problem. Uh, maybe we've solved, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? So, I'm gonna call this a success. As you've seen, uh, no weeping from the manifold, from the gasket uh, that the carburetor sits upon on the manifold. So no fuel is pushing out. So I think, I honest to God think that that Mr. Gasket fuel regulator uh, is, is keeping the pounds at two and a half. So the new problem circles back to when she gets warm, she won't start again, which is a vapor lock or some sort of a fuel problem. And again, right like right now, it's been just a few moments since we tried to start Murray and she didn't start. I don't smell any, any fuel. And I used to smell it all the time. Someone's walking by with their dogs. Oh, it's starting to get hot. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. It's like 85 degrees. Um, hmm. So again, as I was saying, we're gonna call this video a success or this day a success. That fuel regulator is functioning because it's been probably 20, 25 minutes now and I don't have any kind of weepage coming from the uh, where the carburetor attaches to the manifold or any kind of condensation, fuel condensation on the manifold at all, it is dry as a bone. And that's the first time that has happened. So that tells me that that fuel regulator is functioning and it also tells me right that too much fuel was going into the carb was pushing past the float and the needle or the seat or whatever everybody calls it uh, and was causing those leaks and again I don't smell fuel at all the only time I smelt fuel was when I was cranking and that makes sense um, but it instantly dissipated no smell at the moment so I think we've solved a problem, or we've, we've eliminated a, a problem, and now we can focus on uh, vapor lock. And the one question I've got, I've got and if you can help me, uh, that book said to disconnect the electronic choke and just secure the, uh, that, that throttle uh, gear so that it doesn't drop any further, and then I don't have to worry about it, quote unquote, stalling. I'm not sure that's the right answer, but I'm leaning that way. So she won't stall. The problem is once you shut her off, you get vapor lock, which reminds me of an old 914 that my buddy used to have. So maybe we need to go back and start looking at that, that fuel pump. There's lots of videos and discussions about having to sand down some plastic sleeve that the hammer sits in because it gets hot and swells and freezes everything in place. And maybe that's happening, I suppose, at nearly the exact same moment every time. I don't 100% subscribe to that. Or maybe I should just put an electric fuel pump in. What are the odds that an electric fuel pump will mount to where the manual fuel pump goes? I'm sure that's impossible to one, um, but I might look into that too. Then we can control the amount of fuel completely. And then of course that eliminates the need for a fuel regulator. But anyway, so the next thing we might tackle is pulling off that fuel pump and doing some sanding as they say. Uh, but anyway, if you have any suggestions, uh, I tried to show you a couple things. Feel free to send send something in the comments. Um, anything anything you could share would be most appreciated and helpful. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, Andy Granatelli, I am not, but uh, we have made progress. So I'm going to celebrate that victory. It's starting to get really hot. It's like 85 degrees, and it's seven o'clock in the freaking morning. But um, and in this world, when you could be anything you want. You'd be kind, you'd be humble, um, and you'd be forgiving. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.